She touched on Javel Quanta there a couple of times, and I'm really intrigued by Javel Quanta. Not only due to the fact that I spoke to somebody from Bristol Rovers a long time ago who spoke really highly of him and really sort of backed him to make it at Liverpool. I don't think anybody quite expected him to have the the rise or the the role that he's had so far this season. What have you made of that? And have you been equally surprised by the fact that he's suddenly thrust into the first team squad? And it feels like a quite a I don't want to say a permanent fixture there now, but he's certainly a permanent fixture until January, it feels like anyway. Yeah, I think he will get opportunities. Like I say, I mean, there's there's not loads of, of centre backs. Liverpool have left themselves short in terms of senior options because they didn't do anything in the the summer in terms of bringing somebody in. So they've obviously got a level of, of trust with him. I think he's you know been cool and calm and composed, which is always a good thing. That's the, the biggest thing for me really is when you have a, a defender and you throw them in, you don't want them to be doing anything rash or doing anything different to what they would normally do. He, he seems to have the temperament to, to do that. I think that's something we've we've kind of always seen with him for the last couple of years, uh, probably 18 months, two years ago. I remember I spoke to him before a, an FA Youth Cup semi-final. He was the, the captain of, of that age group. He was obviously a leader. He was someone that you know was, was obviously comfortable to, to step up and he must have been, what, 17, 18 at the time, but he was... You know, he, he came across really well in, in that interview and you know, that that's the kind of character I think that you need to be. You need to be a leader. You need to be sort of confident in your own game, obviously keeping things fairly simple and, and fairly basic, but that's what he's done. And I think the, the more he, he can maybe come off the bench for the last 10 minutes, the more he'll be able to grow into that role. And he is definitely an option. He surprised me in as much as I think probably another loan would have been what I would have expected at the start of, of the summer. I also thought Luke Chambers might be a little bit further ahead of him in terms of the pecking order. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, again, another one similar to, to Bobby Clark, who's excelled over the last few years with England's youth groups and, and has come through. Again, can sort of play full-back and centre-back, so you think would would fit perfectly in the way that Liverpool are trying to play. Um, but yeah, but between the two of them, there is definitely a, a lot of, of quality there. We've not obviously seen loads of, of Chambers. There was the, the reports over the summer that you know Bayer Leverkusen might be interested in him. Possibly a loan could have happened, but but didn't. I think it'd be interesting to see the, the next steps for, for both of them. I'm not 100% sure in terms of the injury situation with Chambers. Maybe there's been you know, a couple of little problems over the summer and, and that's why we've not seen loads of him. But I think between the two of those two, there's, there's definitely... You know something long term in it for Liverpool. Obviously, they fit the the system, but you know more important than that, they're both very very good footballers. And I, I, I think for Jarrell, the, the next step really would be to try and get some starts. I think he, he's shown now that he's capable of of coming off the bench and you know at home against some lesser opposition in in Europe. It would be you know still a big step for him. It would still be a big a big ask and very different to playing in League One. But I don't think any of us would be concerned by it or massively worried by it if you saw his name on the team sheet I think more than anything you'd probably be excited No I agree yeah and as you say he's taken it in his stride so far given the fact he was he got a handful of games at the back end of last season in League One to suddenly be sort of thrust into the line like 10 men away at St James's Park he handled himself brilliantly and as you say there his, his temperament is sort of akin to that as well so I don't think anyone certainly me would be overly concerned if he was starting games and as you kind of alluded to you're never too far away from starting games at centre-back for Liverpool at the minute so it might well might well happen unfortunately certainly when we're getting red cards every other week by the by all the sounds of it as well. Um, the main crux of the episode, Matt, I wanted to touch upon was Liverpool's youth policy and the change in it. Obviously, Brexit enforced much of this change and Liverpool have gone down a new pathway. It's been much spoken about. It's been much deliberated on and we continued it this summer as well. Now, some of the names we've spoken about already so far, Ben Doak, um, Bobby Clark and his others, there's Kate Gordon, Trent Cone doherty Callum Scanlon and many more have been players that we've snapped up from British clubs essentially over in Ireland a couple of them as well and we kind of identified them as top talents in different academies we brought them into our own and tried to continue their development with us and stuff like that and I suppose before we go on to the new lads I wanted to touch on how successful do you think that policy's been so far in that new strategy because not every club's doing it Liverpool uh, in my opinion very much at the forefront of it is it working? Do you see a benefit in it? Obviously, the first team are benefiting from it when you look at Ben Doak and Bobby Clark in particular. But the academy itself, is that is the quality of the, the, the academy side raising and therefore is the training levels raising? Has this been a success, would you say? I'd say it's been a big success for Liverpool. I mean, you, you always want to try and, and cut corners or, or save money or you know try and, and find the next best thing before 
you have to pay the, the big money. And there's been a lot of criticism when you look at what Brighton have done over the, the summer with, you know, Moises Caicedo, for example, they bought him for a very small fee and, and have sold him for, for big money. Loads of other examples as well. And people always say, well, well why, would, why don't Liverpool do that? Why couldn't Liverpool go to South America, buy Moises Caicedo, put him in the team? And, you know, the obvious reason for that is that he wouldn't have been ready to, to come in and play the regular minutes as he has for Brighton. He wouldn't have got that development. But I think at youth level, it's, it's obviously slightly different. It's still... Uh, you know, a big step, I'm sure, to go from, say, a Derby County Academy for someone like Kate Gordon to come in and, and play for Liverpool regularly. It's 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 a different environment. The, the expectations are different. He obviously was getting minutes at you know, 15, 16 at Derby, where that isn't probably going to be the case at Liverpool. Had to wait a little bit longer and, and be a bit more patient. But it's, it's almost the same process, I think, for me. You, you're looking for the next big thing before it happens. And I think for me, it's, it's already started to pay off because... Now imagine, for example, that Liverpool had waited a couple of years before they looked at Harvey Elliott. You know, how much would he have cost then compared to, to what he cost? Even just that saving alone would make it a huge amount of money for Liverpool, I think. So if you can do that, you know, once every couple of years, for example, you're saving yourself suddenly a huge amount of money. I, I can understand that the, the opposite point might be that, you know, it, it maybe blocks the path of, of certain other players who are coming through the, the academy or things like that. But just think if you get the, the opportunity for you know a Bobby Clark for example to be signed one of one of the, the top probably two or three talents of his age in the country of course you're going to go and do that and it, it was an opportunistic one if if he was still at Newcastle now would he leave perhaps not maybe he would look at Newcastle in a different way but obviously at the time Liverpool were able to do that deal bring him across and I think within the, the next couple of years we'll see you know, the benefit of that, Kate Gordon, again, is, is one still to, to keep an eye on. And ultimately, you know, as, as much as we want all of these players to do well, the worst case scenario is that you can kind of do what Chelsea do, where they stockpile all of these young kids, suddenly make a load of money. And, you know, worst case scenario for someone like Bobby Clark is that, you know, he, he doesn't quite make it at Liverpool's level, but probably will make it somewhere else in the Premier League. And, you know, look at the money that Manchester City have got for, for players that you know most people wouldn't have even heard of. Romeo Lavia, for example, last summer they got £14 million pounds for a player that had never played it, you know, in, in the Premier League or, or whatever. He was very, very young. But that's £14 million pounds that they can then spend on, on somebody else. So I think it, it just makes a lot of sense. And I think a lot of people are very quick to, to jump on Liverpool for not doing this kind of thing in other areas maybe less quick to, to point out that actually they do do this in their own way in a way that suits them a lot better and, and probably will work out for them in the long term no 100 percent. i didn't really even consider sort of the sort of the knock-on effect it has when you are selling them because you're right sort of reference man city they did it this summer with james trafford i think the goalkeeper as well went to burnley for around 20 million or something like that anything that's that's with all due respect to james trafford that's money for rope when it comes to manchester city like that ffp bump that you're giving yourself via that and it's something Liverpool were good at a few years ago and something we need to get back at like we sold Rian Brewster for good money obviously Dominic Solanke was another one they were a little bit older in terms of their development and stuff like that but Solanke obviously bought him for, for free I think for Chelsea and then we sold him for around the 20 million and we do need to get better at selling to allow ourselves to, to do more in the market in terms of income and so yeah it's a really good point and yeah like I say if one or two of them Bendo, Bobby Clark potentially can actually make it for Liverpool, you know, even better. But I think, yeah, moreover, the academy being stronger helps others develop as well around them. And then whatever you can make on the backside of it, even better. Um, in terms of the two new lads, I think it's Amara, Nalo and Trey and Yoni signed this summer. Have you seen anything of them at all? I know Trey and Yoni scored a hat-trick in a 10-nil friendly win. That's not a bad way to introduce yourself. Yeah, I, I've not seen either of them yet, but obviously a, a team that he scored the hat trick, and you know I think he's you know again one of the, the top talents, a, a player that Liverpool really happy to to get over the line and, and bring in. It, it's just a case of you know almost as bad as it sounds. You, you bring in enough of these lads, then one of them's probably going to make it. They're not all going to make it, but if you bring in ten of the best rated academy youngsters, probably you know the, there's a good chance that 
someone somewhere will pay off in, in some form. So I think it's it, it's promising really Liverpool are continuing to do this. I noticed there was some some quotes that, that resurfaced from Evan Ferguson. I think they were from an interview from about twelve months ago where he kind of said, Well, you know, why why would I have picked Liverpool when, you know, the, the pathway isn't there, the the opportunities aren't there. I might have played in the twenty threes for a couple of years and, and not really got anywhere. And you know, I, I don't think that would have been true. I, I don't think that was true at the time and, and hasn't obviously proven to be true since. But it, it's clear that, you know, these young players and their parents and the families are, are looking at Liverpool still as a place where you can develop, you're at a top club, but you can still make it and, and take that next step. So, you know, that's that that's crucial really. That pathway of you know, Harvey Elliott has done it. Bobby Clark is is maybe the next one to do it. And these young lads will be looking at, at those and thinking, well, you know, in what was it? Maybe six months after Cade Gordon signed, he was going on a first trip, uh, first team trip for, for pre-season. I'm sure these lads are, are looking at that as well. And yeah, it can only be a good thing, can't it? They've both seemingly made good starts. And yeah, a, a hat-trick in one of your first matches for Liverpool is you know, a dream, I think, for any player.